in this video we'll be talking about in vitro fertilization so in vitro fertilization is a complex series of procedure that leads to pregnancy here the fertilization fertilization of sperm and the ovum happens in a petri dish outside the body hence it is in vitro not in vivo so here are the steps of in vitro fertilization first ovarian hyperstimulation is done then uh, sperm retrieval and egg retrieval is done from the respective donors then these uh, gametes are basically combined in in vitro in a petri dish that is known as fertilization in vitro or ivf then embryo is cultured in an incubator and a good embryo is transferred back to the uterus so this is the overall workflow we are going to delve into details so stay tuned till the end let us try to understand the normal procedure of fertilization so in normal procedure of fertilization, in every uh, menstrual uh, cycle, there would be a release of oocyte into the female reproductive tract. And this is normal process of ovulation. If at the same time sperm is also present, then there could be a chance that fertilization happens in a normal scenario. But in many circumstances, normal fertilization is not achievable. Maybe the sperm of the uh, the sperm of the particular male uh, partner is not motile enough to reach that location or there could be also problem in the female as well. So basically in those conditions IVF is done. First step is hormone injection. In this case a uh, injectable hormone ensures that more than one egg mature. Normally only one egg matures in one cycle but in during IVF due to this treatment multiple primordial follicle gets into a graphene follicle and multiple eggs are produced in this ovary and this hormone cocktail is nothing but FSH and LH. In order to understand that we have to understand the normal procedure of uh, follicular development. I have a different video on that you can click on the i button but anyway pituitary derived FSH and LH actually work to give that LH surge and coincidental with that LH surge ovulation takes place. So initial part of the follicular development happened under the influence of FSH and LH. Eventually estrogen and progesterone levels are also important for these development. So these are the overall hormonal control of these entire uterine cycle. So next egg is retrieved from the, from the female reproductive tract. So USG guided probe is inserted into the vagina and basically one needle is passed through the vagina into the ovary and when looking at the uh, USG uh, monitor a technician or a medical personnel would take out the uh, take out some eggs from these ovary. Here there are multiple eggs and the oocytes can be actually removed using a aspiration needle. After that in a sterile culture settings, these, these oocytes are cultured. So they are placed in a petri dish in a sterile condition. Further, sperm is added from the male donor in this same particular situ uh, container. So overall, the gametes of male and female is transferred into a petri dish and they are left there for fertilization. If the fertilization is done properly, next day one cell stage and two cell stage could be observed. But sometimes it is difficult for fertilization when the sperm is only present in the entire petri dish. Maybe sometimes in the male the sperm is not motile enough. In those circumstances, sperm is actually injected into the ovum. Uh, ovum is basically aspirated. And using a fine needle, a sperm is injected inside. This is known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Now, after the injection, basically fertilization would be done and quality control of the fertilization would be observed for next few days under the microscope. And these are the images taken in every subsequent day till the blastocyst stage. Blastocyst stage is the stage when the embryo has to be put back into the mother's womb. So it's important to note that before the embryo could be uh, transferred back to the uh, uterus of the woman, the external membrane, the zona pellucida has to be hatched. So this is known as assistant, uh, assisted hatching 
a laser light actually hatch the external zona pellucida such that implantation would be better. So hatched situation increase the chance of a successful implantation. After that, embryo would be delivered using a catheter through the vagina th into the uterus. So basically at this point of time, the blastocyst should be implanted into the uterine wall. But there is a prerequisite to this step. It has to be ensured. It so it has to be ensured that the uterus can support these developmental stages that happens normally. If you don't know what is a normal stage of development, you can watch in watch the video in I button. So basically, in order to en ensure that the u uterine wall is thick enough uh, to support these uh, implantation, there are specific injections which are provided, and that would thicken up the endometrial lining. And a thick endometrial lining can actually support the implanted embryo. So ultimately, a fraction of the embryo which were for in vitro fertilized would also be cryopreserved for future. Maybe in the first round of the IVF treatment, the implantation didn't happen properly. So these particular embryos can be thawed again and can be incubated to transferred again back to the same patient. So overall, in this video, we looked at the process of in vitro fertilization in great details. If you want to know the uh, general process of fertilization, the videos are all provided in the I button and watch the I button because there are a lot of developmental biology associated videos. See you in next video.